Now that we have the links in place, let's actually build out the files that these links link to. So within the app folder, I'm going to include a new folder and call this one dashboard. And within the dashboard folder, I'm going to include, I'm going to create two new folders, views and models. And models I'm going to leave empty, but views I'm going to create a new file within that called v underscore dashboard dot php. And within the main dashboard folder, I'm going to create a new file index.php. So like I said in the last video, I'm not going to be focusing on any fancy features for this dashboard functionality. Um, I'm going to leave that up to you, but I am going to demonstrate at least how to build out the basic pages to give you a framework that you can work on. So with the dashboard section, at least all the individual pages and folders built out. Let's go back to the app folder and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this one settings. And similarly, I'm going to create a new folder within that called views. A new folder called models. And a couple additional files. One file within settings.php. It's just going to be password.php. Within the views folder, another new file, v underscore password.php. And then within models, a new folder, or a new file, excuse me, uh, m underscore settings.php. And um, I'm going to leave the change password functionality to a little bit later. I'm going to work on building out the actual page framework first, but we will come back to this. So settings is fine for the moment. Let me go back to the dashboard folder and I'm going to open up index.php and uh, let's actually do a little bit of coding here. I can grab a bit of the code from our settings.php file, the old file. Um, I guess just this section, the include init and the check authorization. And then now that we've copied that, we can actually delete settings.php because we won't be using that in the future. So to go back to our dashboard folder and index.php, I'm going to paste that in place. So we have include init.php. Um, we need to make sure this links correctly. So that links properly. Um, can delete this. And I'm going to do like I've done previously do an if. Um, actually, I don't even need to do this at all. No if statement needed. So we're just going to load the view immediately. So to do that, fp template load, and it's going to be app path and dashboard views v underscore dashboard dot php. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. And now for our views. And uh, to make things a little bit easier for ourselves, I'm going to create two template files, a header and a footer, that we're going to use and we're going to include within this PHP file. And it'll make things a little bit easier for us so we don't have to repeat the same code multiple times in different pages. So I'm going to start out with a PHP. And I'm going to do this load app path. And I'm going to load core templates t underscore page underscore head dot php. Then I'm going to copy this and paste it down below, except this time I'm going to load the foot dot php. And now within this section, now it's time for actual HTML. So div, I'm going to have an ID 
of fp underscore wrapper just to keep things consistent. Um, and then we're going to start out with an h1. This will be our header that goes across the window. And I'm going to have uh, CMS settings. That's what I'm going to call that. And div ID of FP underscore content. Again, keeping consistent with previous code that we've done. And this is where it gets a little bit different. Um, I'm going to have a div with a class of FP underscore left. This is going to be our left column on that page. And a div with a class of FP underscore right. That'll be the right column on this page. And oopsie, wrong right there. Okay. Um, so within the right column, I'm going to have an H2. I'm going to call it dashboard. And below it, I'm going to have a paragraph tag. It's simply going to say, um, Welcome to Flight Path CMS dashboard. Select. Please select from the options to the left. And within this, fp underscore left div, this is where we're going to have our navigation. And um, we're actually going to make this dynamic. So I'm going to show you how to do this probably in the next video. But I'm going to use PHP. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to call a new function that we're going to create shortly called cms underscore nav. And we're going to pass in one value that I'm simply going to call dashboard. So what this function will do is it's going to echo out a navigation element and we're going to set the main category that we want selected. In this case it's going to be dashboard and I'll, like I said I'll show you how to do that in the next video. As the last item in this video however let me go ahead and create our t page foot and t page head files. And I wasn't completely sure where to put these files to be honest. Um, but I think that within the core folder and the templates folder makes the most sense. Um, these are going to be files that are going to be accessed from other content management system settings pages. So this probably makes the most sense. So um, new file t page head.php and t page foot.php. Let me slide this over so you can see. Um, let me close out a couple of these pages. Okay, so let me open up uh, T page foot first. This is quite easy. Um, we're just going to use a closing body tag and a closing HTML tag. And then tpage head. Um, let's grab the doc type from our main index.php file. There we go. And uh, just so I'm clear, the reason why we need a doc type and a full, you know, HTML and body tags and all that is this is going to be popping up in an iframe, which is basically, according to the browser, it's a completely separate page. So we need all of the usual HTML code. So I pasted in my doc type, um, just standard HTML, head tags, and the title. I'm simply going to call it um, Flight Path CMS. Um, we also need the meta information, so let me grab that here. And we're going to need a little bit of HTML, or excuse me, a little bit of JavaScript here and the connection to our main CSS file. But we can grab that, I believe, from t underscore head. Yep. So let me copy this entire file and we'll just delete out the chunks we don't need. So I'm going to paste that in place. And uh, let me tab things in nicely.
Okay, so this links out to app resources. That's good. Um, jQuery and color box. This is fine. Um, we probably want to include tiny MCE just in case. I'm not going to be showing you any functionality that's required for that or that requires tiny MCE, um, but it may be useful to you. We don't need color box because we won't be popping up um, color box windows within our color box window. So I can delete that. And all we need within this jQuery.ready section is basically this last bit. So I want to add FP close to this section. And I'd like to give the user an easy way to close this settings pop up. And to that end, um, we can't use this particular line because this refers to a closing a color box that exists within the iframe. Except we want to close the color box that exists within the parent page. So to do that, we need to modify this a little bit. So parent dot, and rather than using this dollar sign, since we're using um, jQuery no conflict, we have to use jQuery like this. So basically what this section says is if an element with an ID of FP cancel or FP close is clicked on, it's going to close that iframe based color box. And the last change, at least for this particular video, um, if I go back to v underscore dashboard.php, let's actually add in a close link. Um, I know that Colorbox does do this for us automatically. If you remember a couple of videos ago when we were talking about the login, we actually disabled that functionality because I didn't want it. Um, how do I put this? I didn't want the user to accidentally close the window and I didn't want it to be distracting when they're doing the login process. But for a settings page like this, it makes sense that you want to have some easy way to close the page if you're done with it. So within this h1, I'm going to add a div. And that div is going to have an ID of fp close. And I'm simply going to say um, close pop up probably makes it most sense. Like so. Okay. And so in the next video, I'm going to be talking about CSS styling to actually style what we have here and also this CMS nav function.